Hello guys. In the last lecture, we talked about the constraints, and uh, we saw that uh, how the number of independent and holonomic constraints can reduce the degrees of freedom of a many-particle system. In this lecture, we will talk about the D'Alembert's principle. It's a differential principle, and uh, how this D'Alembert's principle. Give rise to Lagrange's equations of motion. So, before introducing the D'Alembert's principle, let me define something else. There is a virtual displacement. So, how to define the virtual displacement? As the name suggests, it is not actual displacement. It is not a displacement in in time. Not actual displacement in time. So this is basically change in configuration of the system as a result of Uh, as a result of any arbitrary infinite symbol, infinite symbol means tends to zero. Change of the coordinates. So, coordinate means the RIs and infinitesimal change the virtual displacement that is defined by delta RI. So, virtual displacement is basically the change in configuration of a system as a result of any arbitrary infinitesimal change of the coordinates, which is not in time. This is a change in configuration. So, at any particular instant. of time. So, first of all, let us be clear that virtual displacements are not actual displacement in time. So, this is how we define the virtual displacement. So, now, let us say, let us consider a many particle system which is in equilibrium. In that case, so a mini particle system in equilibrium. Equilibrium means each particle is in equilibrium. So, if f i is defined like the net force on 
आई एच पार्टिकल देन एज द सिस्टम इज एज द ईच ऑफ द पार्टिकल इज इन इक्वली ब्रियम देन एफ आई इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो इन दैट केस वी कैन राइट लाइक एफ आई डॉट डेल्टा आर आई दैट इज ऑल्सो विल बी जीरो सो दिस इज काइंड ऑफ द वर्क डन ड्यू टू द वर्चुअल डिस्प्लेसमेंट ओके सो इन इक्वली ब्रियम वर्क डन ड्यू टू द वर्चुअल डिस्प्लेसमेंट फॉर इच पार्टिकल दैट इज जीरो सो वी कैन ऑल्सो टेक द साम ऑन बोथ साइड सो इन राइट हैंड साइड इट विल ऑलवेज बी जीरो Zero. Let's call it equation one. So, if I is the net force on ith particle, then as we are talking about many particle system, then I we can divide if I into two parts. If I is equal to if E, which is the external force on ith particle. Plus some f i. What is f i? F i is the force on the particle due to other any other constraints, any other constraint force. So as there are many particle, and if we put some restrictions on the system, so then the system will be the particle will be constrained in its in its motion, and in how it will be constrained. it will generate a force it will give a force on a particle to constrain its motion so this force is given by the fi so this small fi this small fi is called the force of constraint and this fi e is the external force force of constraint on on ith particle so in that case from equation 1 From equation one, we can write like this: fi. So sum over fi delta r i is equal to zero, and we put f of i external plus the constraint forces on i particle in place of fi dot delta r i is equal to zero. This delta R I. These are not actual displacement. These are the virtual virtual displacements. Okay. And remember, we have the force of constraints. So in the system, there are constraints. Under that condition, all the R I S. They are not independent. They are not generalized coordinate. Okay. so if we have a let's say n number of particles we are talking about 3n number of coordinates that is what ri ri defines so ri is not generalized coordinates in that case ri is will not be independent now sum over fi external dot r i plus sum over i the force of constraint dot delta r i is equal to zero so this is this term is
call the virtual work so this is not the actual work done okay here also like the this is the virtual work done of the net fo net forces that is we are making it zero so here also this is this term will be the virtual work because the displacement is virtual displacement not actual displacement of the forces of constraint so let's call it equation 2 now we will restrict our discussion to the systems where the virtual work done by the forces of constraint are zero so we will only talk about those systems so we will we we'll restrict our discussion to the systems where the virtual work done by the forces of constraint is zero so for example i mean there are a large number of systems which fall into this category for example system of rigid body so an example of such kind of system would be rigid body another example would be a particle moving on a frictionless surface so in that case if a particle uh, moves on a frictionless surface so in the forces of constant that is the normal force that restricts the particle to um, go i mean that restricts the particle from going into into this um, into the surface so that is the normal force right and the particle moves in this direction so delta ri delta ri the virtual displacement the uh, change in configuration of the particle is perpendicular direction is in the perpendicular direction to the um, forces of constraint so in that case in that case uh, the virtual work done will be zero and we will talk about such systems but there are a lot of systems which uh, doesn't satisfy this condition so there are some systems which doesn't satisfy this condition for example where friction is present so the frictional forces 
let's say a particle is moving in a plane and the virtual displacement will be then the change of configuration is in say if the particle goes along this direction moving along this direction then the virtual displacement will, will, will be along this direction and the friction that will be parallel to this parallel or maybe anti parallel but not perpendicular to this virtual displacement so in that case the virtual forces I mean, the work done due to the virtual forces will not be zero so this kind of systems and kind that those systems where the friction involved are uh, excluded in this discussion okay So we will talk about only those systems, but this virtual work done by the virtual displacement will be zero. So then the equation two will become then equation two will become. So if this term goes to zero, then that then only remains the sum over um if external dot delta r i so sum over i if i external dot delta r i is equal to c so this equation let's call it equation Three. This equation is called the principle of virtual work, and this term. This term is basically virtual work. of the external forces now remember that this delta i delta r i is they are not independent they are not linearly independent so in that case we cannot write like all f i is will be equal to zero if these are independent if these are generalized coordinates we can write them we can write this because they can change change individually but we have the equation of constraints we have the constraint we have, we have the constant forces also so in that case these ris are not independent so we cannot directly write that all the external forces on the particular z so this is because delta r i s are not linearly independent okay then how should you what should we do we should find some coordinate where in in which the coordinates are linearly independent in that case we will uh, just um, throw away the this 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 star man we can keep keep the rest we can set the rest to equal to zero so these linearly independent coordinates are called the generalized coordinates so we will write r i s delta r i s in terms of the generalized coordinate we will do it we will do that later before that let's derive the de alembert's principle uh, we already know that like the net force on the ith particle will be equal to the rate of change of momentum of the ith particle so in that case if i minus pi dot is equal to 0 
so if i minus pi dot pi vector dot delta ri that will also be zero if we take the summation then it will also be zero because if i minus pi is zero pi dot is equal to zero so there is no rate of change of momentum so now this a phi we can again break it in two parts one part is if i external minus pi dot dot delta ri plus i will write the other part here that is uh, the forces the virtual forces the forces of constraints uh, not not virtual forces the forces of constraints so the forces of constraints on a particle dot the virtual displacement of a particle this is now this term so we already extruded um such systems where this term is non zero so we will always consider that this term is zero we will only talk about those systems where the uh, virtual work done by the forces of constraints that are zero so in that case if i external minus pi dot dot product virtual displacement is equal to zero this equation this equation is called the d alembert's principle okay so equation 4 this equation is called is called the d alembert's principle so remember here we cannot write i mean as the delta ri are not are not independent they are not all independent we cannot write like uh, if i external minus pi dot is equal to zero that we cannot write so in order to do that we will trans we will write this this uh, we will uh, write the equation in terms of generalized coordinates so let's say we have the generalized coordinates set of generalized coordinates generalized coordinate means minimum number of independent coordinates required to describe a system This is Q one, Q two, dot dot dot, Q n. This is a set of generalized coordinates. So in that case, any R I, the coordinate of a particle, I a particle. Position of a particle can be written as a function of q1, q2, dot dot dot, q1, comma t. Any R I can be written like this. So then, the velocity that we write as d R I d t rate of change of position that can be written like. del del q i or let's say q j of r i for all 
जे डी क्यू जे डी टी इज द चेन रूल ऑफ डेरिवेटिव प्लस डेल आर आई डेल टी दिस इज द बेसिक कैलकुलस and the virtual displacement delta ri that can be written as sum of all all i del ri del qj delta of qj so here the t term will not come because it is not a displacement delta ri is not a displacement is in time it's a displacement in the configuration so this uh, delta ri delta uh, t delta t this will be zero because it's not a displacement in time so we will remove that okay so these are very important relations so now let's look at the the elements principle and let's concentrate on this first term so from equation 4 we are getting two terms like right? right so if i external dot delta ri minus pi dot dot delta ri equal to zero So now let's concentrate on the first term, term one. So and this is the term two. So we'll concentrate now on the first term, which is sum over i f i external. dot delta r i okay so now we can write it like if i external dot this delta r i this delta r i we can replace it from here this is sum over j so one more time j is the summation of this so we can write it from here we can replace this delta ri which is so over j delta ri delta qj del qj delta qj and this is sum over i which is basically sum over i comma j if external dot delta r i delta q j into the virtual displacement in generalized coordinate so this delta q j delta q j is virtual displacement in generalized coordinate now i can write this term as sum over j sum over i delta qj because ij they are not dependent in this and this term we will write it as qj then the equation becomes Sum over i, f 
i external dot delta r i is equal to sum over j capital q j delta q j so this delta q j so let's call it equation 5 we will use this equation later so this delta qj are the virtual displacement in delta small qj these are the virtual displacement in generalized coordinates and this capital qj which is defined like sum over all i fi external dot delta ri delta qj is called the generalized force it is called the generalized force now notice that this though we call it generalized force it may not be always the diamond in dimension of force you know because this delta qi the generalized coordinates qi they can be um, angles also they can be different things they don't need to have a dimension of length always so in that case uh, for for let's say for angular displacements if the delta qi is are angular displacements then qj will be torque not exactly force Though we call it generalized force, but these are not always in, in unit of force. Okay. So this is how we define the generalized force. So these the Alembert's principle, these equation and these relations, and equation five and equation and this expression of QJ. This will be used in the next next class and uh, we will derive the Lagrange's equation of motion from this D'Alembert's principle in the next class. Okay. Bye.